Hi teammates, let's dive into some mysteries. So right here, barium carbonate is what we're going to look at today. Take a look at this. It's also called witherite. And basically, whenever you eat fast food, you know, like I had a friend named Laszlo Perlacki who I swam with at Concordia. And he'd be like, you know how when you eat fast food, the next day you feel great in the water. Like you feel faster in the water the next day, you know, even though you ate all that, like what people think of as garbage. So because it gives you energy, you know, for the next day or whatever. So um, and then also if you eat fast food and then try to go off of it, you'll notice you'll get sick. Like if you eat home food, you'll get kind of sick. So I know it has to do with the Pergamus um, tribe a little bit, that church in the Bible, you know, the thing sacrificed to idols and all that. But um, there's a deeper meaning here, and the barium carbonate is what we're looking at. So I'll backtrack a little bit. Um, Lauren Harris, this group of seven, I believe, was kind of sinister in... Um, group of seven here you can take a look at that the algonquin school algonquin shows up a lot on like street names and stuff in the u.s and uh this lauren stewart harris was part of the group of seven who were like um new age type canadian painters and um i believe there's something going on with them that's like kind of sinister for um you know, voodoo type, getting the voodoo into um, Canada as well, you know, because the Canadians, in a basic sense, they, they are honest, you know, just like the Austin Powers movies are honest about the burdens of the id characters and many other characters as well, all Baal Shalisha, but, um, and even into the heroes of end times. You know, James Bond touches on all that stuff, but um, they touch on it in, an, in a subtle way, whereas Austin Powers brings it all to the forefront and they just say what it is. So um, I believe they're part of that voodoo of the Britain, Britain taking over um, the Canadian side as well. They probably did it from north to south. And that's the, the northern um, army that's talked about in the Bible of invasion, you know. That's what I believe that is. The invasion comes from the north and it's all, um, that's, Canada was taken over by Britain is what I'm saying. So um, we've got that there. And then it led me to this, this Charles W. Stockley Center or uh, Stocky Center for Performing Arts or something. And um, this came up. I wanted to show this tonight. Our film at the Stocky series continues with All is True. The year is 1613 and Shakespeare is acknowledged as the greatest writer of the age. But disaster strikes when his renowned Globe Theater burns to the ground. Devastated, Shakespeare returns to Stratford where he must face a troubled past and a neglected family. The film begins at 7 p.m. at tickets. Okay, so all is true there, and you can see the the, the film poster type. Um, and this is in Canada, you know. So just the way it's written and everything, it's kind of like the relationship of it and Ben V right now. And uh, I'm not, I'm not leaving, you know. I'm not. I guess I should say I'm not like uh, cashing out on everything. I'm just, I'm trying to distance myself from um, the mobbing of the fifth age type, you know, of going through all that. But um, I still hear everything and we'll, we'll get it all figured out. But um, it's just, I wanted to acknowledge that, you know, because they're even talking about the relationship of, what's going on right now with the Watchmen and because Ben V is a Watchman as well. And, um, you know, the one writing the book and, um, so basically we're just, we're in that time is what I'm saying. Like this is all current up to date. It's not, it's like Grok says, it's not separate. 
it's like this is this is happening right now so that's why i don't want ben to go down the route of britain and all that with acknowledging you know a type of uh revelation 17 woman for for many years to come you know it needs to be that all this holds true you know i'd like to believe that my prophecies are true whereas even the old testament and new testament are counted as the gordon um you know who destroys the bad signal and like there's problems with the old testament is what that is and he dismantles the bomb while in the trucks so that means that there's there's some problems with the old testament we'll go over that because um it's shown in uh in some of the strong's concordance that i've that i've got here and um and then the glen rage is the two-face of the new testament which is like it's about what's fair you know like that's you know it, it's the grace versus the works type you know so all that has to be corrected and then you've got ben ben v mobbing with the book of remembrance and that's going to be um I'm not saying that's perfect. That's definitely not perfect, you know, but um, I'd like to get it as close to that as we can so that there aren't problems with it. But you got to understand, I want to get to that point. Whereas Ben V and some other people were mobbing like, no, let's stay in this uh, pseudo fifth age and get everyone's eye checked out, you know, which I, I don't think we should do. So um, this right here, polyanth. I don't have a creature for him yet, but we're going to keep him in our midst here. Um, check out his uh, French down here under his works that he did. Theater, medicine, art. Um, you'll see the barium carbonate there. And um, he did a lot of good work. So I believe he's a, he's a stock type character for the Mountain Dew Lemon. And uh, we'll, we'll keep him in our in our midst here. But uh, James McCollum, this is the guy we're looking at today. Um, James Metcalf McCollum. Okay. So take a look at this. And I've got this here. So I'll let you read that. So November 1st, 2019 morning, I see James Metcalf McCollum is the it creature tree and from his birth in 1860 to 1870. And that's basically starting on the date that he was born, you know, whether it was March or April or whatever, it doesn't say. So um, he went through the Chuck Wallahead creature for um, the 15 to 23 dates every month from 1860 to 1870, he went through the lice head creature. Then he was the golem head creature from 1870 to 1891. Then the pyro head creature from 1891 to 1899. So about eight years there and the golem was um, 21, okay. So he was the Najar, and that's a Mark Amp and Najar, um, spelled a little bit differently. Um, creature closely related to the blue sloth fashion, okay. That's in that way, okay. That's how he did it because the Najar is closely related to the Magaran um, in my time, you know, under, under my burdens or whatever. But he, he did it with the blue sloth type. And that was from 1899 to 1909. Last, he was a mixture of JFK and Tupac head creatures from 1909 to uh, 43 with Samson balances of the two and a starseed Paul Walker type Jonas symbolic burden. Okay. So he did it kind of like the black hole symbolism that we show is the Huitzoptal type. 
um, that's what that was with the uh, car it's like car and the mouth is closed and all that that's all Paul Walker um, which is shown it that's all shown in the Fast and the Furious film whenever he um, does the raid on the Asian and he's got his he's got his mouth sealed and um, that's all that was all prophecy that he was going to die in the car you know and they wouldn't be able to to hear him or whatever but some people said they could hear him screaming when he died so um i know that's heavy but uh you know just take it for what it is that's how he died and um you know he is the holy spirit is what i see so um i see barium carbonate is what the elite have put in the fast food um, they use the hexagonal form of it in the food and to some people that have gone through tribulation their taste buds modify the food to be in cubic form of barium carbonate polyanth knew of this okay so um, and even like G's um, G is in the Aussies you know like Laszlo was an Aussie type he was a distance swimmer, is what I'm saying. So, and most Aussies are distance um, swimmers, but um, and that's what I was as well. So I have the I have this symbolism, you know, and um, I don't want to say I don't want to like brag or whatever, but I've probably put, I've probably perfected the form of it, and that's how I get the visions and everything. I, I might not even have cubic, I might have like a diamond shape or something. So Polyanth knew about this. So it's, it's very important because I've always known this. I just didn't know how to explain it, but this explains it. Okay, so we've got that. And then I've got this here as well, um, right here. Strong's Hebrews 6723, which is like the red rum, because 67 means period, and 23 is like the throne of Abraham, um, which is like the Mickey Mouse ears on the Washington, D.C. map. Um, so what you get is uh, T-S-I-Ya there. So what I'm looking at it is like is like tizzy, like you're in a tizzy why is the Revelation 17 woman drinking? And then, um, or like tizzy dizzy is the way I'm reading it. And then Yah is, um, Yah H represents tear. Okay. <laughs> so I had, I had this symbolism. Okay. Back in 2014 and, um, you know, with the E figure and, so it's crazy that it would be the yaw, the yaw there, you know, because yaw to me represents tear, you know, like Yahweh is the tear figure. And that's Cody, you know, my friend. And I know it sounds like, well, you're saying normal people are gods, but well, it's, <laughs> that's, you know, what I see. So, um, but we, we're past that. So, but it's, but it's yaw. So, this is like an example of what has to be corrected because we I showed this with the Egyptians, you know, that they were putting tear and everything, you know, kind of like I do with Michael, put him and everything. But, you know, they were, but this is the Bible, you know, this is, and you may see it differently, but that's what I see. And, you know, it would hold true if I hadn't changed this right here and I added, two extra guys climbing the tree but this is what i see you know i'm not gonna change i'm not gonna change what i'm doing because because of what i what's supposed to be true you know i'm not so anyway i'm sorry but uh, things got to be corrected and i know that we're mobbing like crazy right now we're mobbing like crazy like what i what i just said i i've I have trouble believing, you know, but I know we're at that level and uh, Ben is recording everything. It's all getting written. So we'll just, we'll go with it. You know, we'll go with it until the end comes. 
So, and they just did the Brexit stuff yesterday or were, or were supposed to. And we don't even know what happened with that, but um, that represents the Revelation 17 woman as well. But uh, let me show you this. Um, there was something else here. Let me find it. Here it is. Okay. Um, yeah, this guy. Now, he was heir to the Massey Harris uh, fortune. Okay. Look at that. Massey Harris fortune. Okay. This guy was. This, this Canadian. So I clicked on it. Massey Ferguson Limited. Okay. Um, now, look at this. This is the time we're in. Okay. All is... See hall my ears, you know. All is see hall my ears. You're not listening to anybody, is what the Ben figure says to it, you know. Like this is this is what I'm talking about. Like I see this stuff all the time now, where it's like it's current day, like current moment, current minute. Okay, and that's what these things are that are built in from long ago are current up to date to the minute of this stuff and even just a passing thought will be something built in from long ago into this this voodoo out of spite with the english trying to run it all the english as the reformed red you know basically the reformed red and the Beddingfield family, basically the, the real heirs of the British throne, but exiles is what they've become. So it's wild. Um, there's something else too. I'll show this real quick and then I'll, I'll end the video with this, but, um, hope everyone's doing well. I just wanted to show all this. I know it's early, so we'll see what happens today. But um, here's this right here. Um, if you watch this, Natasha Bedingfield, kick it. Now, this is my cousin, okay? I don't, her, her side of the family went to New Zealand. And then one of my grandpas, like old grandpas, came over from New Zealand and started in California and then went all the way to New York. And my grandpa, my grandpa on my dad's side, um, because of course it would be my dad's side, he, um, he grew up in New York. And even that, in, in the film, um, the Sully, um, they pat the the plane went past where his apartment was you know where his family's apartment was and um his dad clifford was a real um mean guy you know basically kicked my grandpa out my grandpa became a um navy pilot and uh, pilot for twa and like um you know, there's all sorts of corruption within the TWA and all that, or there was, but, um, so Natasha Bedingfield, she's saying, kick it, you know, <laughs> she, she's pushing for someone to kick it and have, have it be the Brahma or whatever. So, um, <laughs> it's, it's crazy, you know, like she's saying kick it if you want to make it you know if you if you want to make it so instead of me doing the kicking they want to kick me in the head you know have me be um a, a well-rounded uh cut basically cut up or whatever um may saw type figure so um I, that that's supposed to be a joke you know i, I she's just showing the symbolism you know she's um, seems to be doing well with everything and, uh, she's gone through the industry and everything and seemed to be making it out. Okay. Is what I'm saying. She's not like all used up like these other ones. So, um, that's cool. And, and Daniel hasn't had any thing in a while, but, um, you know, that's her brother or whatever, but 
Yeah, I wanted to show that and uh, just have a good night and thank you.